Okay, so in this video we want to return to looking at exponential equations. Um, but this time with logarithms in our arsenal, we want to look at situations where we would require a logarithm to solve an exponential equation. So this doesn't take away from the fact that if we can solve the equation by expressing both sides of the equation as a single power with the same base, so if we can write it as a to the power of x equals a to the power of y, then we can say that x equals y and there's no logs required whatsoever. If, however, we cannot express both sides of the equation with the same base, as a power with the same base, then we're going to use logarithms. And the key thing is going to be about that conversion from an exponential relationship to a logarithmic relationship. So we know that if a to the power of x is equal to y, the equivalent log statement is that log base a, remember the base of the exponential becomes the base of the log of y is equal to x. And so if we have an exponential equation that we can't solve by writing both sides with the same base, we want to convert it into a log. Okay. Alright, so here, for example, 5 to the power of x minus 1 is equal to 8. So 5 and 8 cannot both be expressed with the same base, and so we can't use the fact that we can't use the one-to-one -one property of exponentials. So I'm going to convert this from an exponential statement into a log statement. So it's going to become log base 5, so the base of the exponent becomes the base of the log, of 8 must be equal to x minus 1. And now we're just about solved, we want to get x on its own, so we're going to add 1 to both sides. So x is equal to log base 5 of 8 plus 1. And we could stop there, but I'm going to write these together as a single log, just as a neater answer. So that is log base 5 of 8 plus, now remember 1 is the same as log base 5 of 5, and then my log laws say that if I'm adding two logs with the same base, I can combine them together by multiplying the things in the log. So it's going to be log base 5 of 8 times 5, which is 40. So x equals log base 5 of 40. Now don't forget, if you were to solve that equation with your CAS, it would, um, your CAS won't use log base 5 by default, it will use log base e. And so it will give an equivalent answer. Um, let me just type it in it will give an equivalent answer um, using log base e. So if it's 5 to the power of x minus 1 equals 8 and we solve that for x, it will tell us that it is log base, log, log base e of 40 over log base e of 5. And remember that's that change of base rule, we can use a different base. This is indeed the same as log base e of 40 over log base e of 5 on the basis of the change of base rule. But we wouldn't, that's certainly not the neatest way to write it. Um, we can also confirm that it does indeed give the same numerical value as our answer, which is log base 5 of 40. I'm oh, sorry, control enter. Which is also 2.2920, etc. So it's the same value. So log base 5 of 40 is going to be the nicest option there. Okay, question 2 is an inequality. Now I want to make clear that any time we have any non-linear inequality, be it quadratic inequality, cubic inequality, exponential inequality, log inequality, cos inequality, whatever it might be, you must consider a graph. Okay, The idea of changing the equation from a log to an exponential um, with do I flip the sign or don't I is complicated. So what you actually want to be able to think about here, I also think it's complicated with the fractional base. So personally, I would choose to write 8, 1 8 as 8 to the negative 1. So actually what we're looking at here is 8 to the power of negative x is bigger than or equal to 5. Okay. So what I really want to focus on is this exponential graph being equal to 5, just in terms of where the solutions should be. So again, it doesn't need to be a precise graph. So we haven't, we'll talk about exponential graphs in the next video. But if we were sketching y equals 8 to the power of negative x, the negative in the power is going to reflect it in the y-axis. So the graph shape would go this way. Okay, It's a decreasing, and you can also think about that, it's a decaying exponential function because the base is a fraction. As x gets bigger, the value gets smaller. And then y equals 5. So if that was y equals 5, and that's y equals 8 to the power of negative x, we want to know where that exponential is bigger than or equal to 5. So we're going to need to know where that point is, and it's bigger than or equal to up here, which is when x is less than or equal to whatever that particular value is. Okay. 
So um, we want to focus on really just solving the equation first of all. Okay, so if we wanted to look at 8 to the negative x is equal to 5, we would use um, convert to logs. So negative x equals log base 8 of 5, which means x equals negative log base 8 of 5. Or you could also write that if you want as log base 8 of 1 fifth by putting that negative up into the power. Okay, so what we've found there is what this x value is. It's negative log base 8 of 5. Okay, and so therefore by thinking about the graphs we can see the solution to the inequality. So the solution to the inequality is that x has to be less than or equal to that particular value in order that the exponential function be higher than y equals 5. So the graph is really just about deciding which way around your inequality needs to go. Okay, whether you want x to be less than that value when they're equal or whether you want it to be bigger than that value when the two graphs are equal. So in this case, x needs to be less than or equal to that value so that the um, exponential part of the function is bigger than 5, or bigger than or equal to 5, I should say. Okay, question 3. Again, the first thing I'm noticing here is that we have subtraction. Okay, and there aren't index laws for subtraction. And so what we need to look for here is that this is actually in the shape of a different kind of function. So I'm looking to see that it looks vaguely quadratic. I'm seeing the 3x squared there and etc. We also want to think about this. So 3 to the power of 2x is the same as 3x all squared. We think about when do we add powers? Well, we add powers when we're multiplying. So this is the same as 3 to the power of x times 3 to the power of 1 minus 10 equals 0. So if I were to let u equal 3 to the power of x to help me see that quadratic function, we've got u squared minus, now that's 3 to the power of 1 times u, so it's 3 times u and minus 10. Now we focus on solving the quadratic and then once we've got the values of u for the quadratic, we'll re-substitute u equals 3 to the power of x. Okay, so it is u minus factors of negative 10 that add up to negative 3. It's going to be negative 5 and 3 and positive 2. So it factorizes to give u equals 5 or u equals negative 2. And now we have 3 to the power of x is equal to 5 or 3 to the power of x is equal to negative 2. We can um, convert from an exponential to a log. So if 3 to the power of x equals 5, that means that x equals log base 3 of 5. And if we do that with this function, we're going to get this, sorry, the second solution. We're going to get x equals log base 3 of negative 2. And you'll remember that we can't take log of a negative. And actually, if you think about this line here, you should know that you can't go any further. Because 3 to the power of any number is never going to equal a negative thing. Okay? 3 to the power of x, if you were to think about the graph of y equals 3 to the power of x, it's an exponential. It's never going to equal negative 2. Okay? So it's not possible to raise 3 to the power of anything and make it negative. 3 to the power of a negative number would be a fraction. Okay? 3 to the power of a positive number would be a bigger value that's bigger that's big, sorry, a value that's bigger than 3. Um, 3 to the power of a fraction would be a, some sort of root. Um, but it's never going to be equal to a something negative, okay? And so we actually get, um, which is undefined, okay? Um, and so we get no solution from there. And so the only solution is this one solution here, x equals log base 3 of 5. Okay, number 4, again, I'm seeing a subtraction. There's no index laws for combining those together. So I want to focus on trying to make a substitution to see this as some other function, solve that other function, and then substitute. Um, we can replace for our substituted value again. So let's get everything on the one side here. I'm also rec recognizing that I have 9 to the power of x here, and I have 3 to the power of x here. So given that I want to make a substitution for either 3 to the power of x or 9 to the power of x, I want to try and get those the same. So 9 is 3 squared. So I'm going to think about that as being 3 squared to the power of x. Um, and then I'm also going to subtract 10 times 3 to the power of x and add 9. So everything's on the one side. This 3 squared to the power of x is 3 to the power of 2x, which is 3 to the power of x squared. Okay. 
and so we can see that we can again substitute for 3 to the power of x. Sorry, it won't always be 3. I didn't mean to make both examples with a base of 3, but that's okay. So we're going to make that substitution. We're going to let u equal 3 to the power of x. And so u squared minus 10 times u plus 9 equals 0. And we can factorize. Factors of positive 9 that add up to negative 10. Are u minus 9, u minus 1. And so u is equal to 9 or u is equal to 1, and then we can substitute back. So 3 to the power of x equals 9. We don't need logs there. 3 to the power of x equals 3 squared, and that means x equals 2. Or u, um, 3 to the power of x is equal to 1. Now 1 is the same as 3 to the power of 0, and so x is equal to 0. Now yes, you can use logs. You can say, well, this means x equals log base 3 of 1, and that is 0, um, but you don't need logs if, if you can express both sides with the same base. It isn't to say... You, don't, you can't use them though. Okay, so a mixture of exponential equations from exercises 5G and 5D.